This is a BerserkerOffRoad.com review of the Rugged Ridge Modular XHD Snorkel. Subscribe for more videos. I got the Rugged Ridge Snorkel because I had an overlanding trip planned with 22 river crossings. I wanted to increase my fording depth so I wouldn't suck water into the engine. What I liked about the Rugged Ridge intake is it didn't have the plastic tubes that ran you know, all the way down the side of the hood. Instead, it pops out right here where the cowl is. So I liked the cleaner install and I, I was attracted by the idea that I could uh, take off the, the tall snorkel and run just a little short one around town. When I got this on, I decided I liked the look of the, the whole snorkel, so I, I never even ran the, the short snorkel. Reasons for a snorkel. Most people get a snorkel because they think they're gonna go through deep water. After having this and, and reading up on it more, there are actually other advantages to having a snorkel. The first being colder air intake. Some guys, they you, know, you run a cold air intake in your engine and you think, oh, it's a cold air intake, it's in the name, but really, you're just sucking in more hot air from inside the engine bay. This moves the intake outside of the engine bay, so it's much cooler air. This is the stock top that the snorkel came with. I ran it for a while, but it was getting mud and rocks in it when I was going off-roading. You know, I get stuck in a mud hole or, or whatever, and when I'd kick up mud from the tires, the mud would go straight down in it, and it would clog up the, the little drain that the snorkel has. I got tired of that, so I ordered the pre-filter, and I'm much happier with this, so I highly recommend spending the extra 55 bucks or whatever it is to get the, uh, the pre-filter instead of the stock top that it came with. So it works as air gets sucked up here, and it, sp and it spins around inside this pre-filter and the heavy junk in the air like dirt or, or bugs or, or rocks or whatever settles inside this cup then the cleaner air goes in the middle and then down the intake to your filter so it pre-filters out all the big stuff floating in the air that's beneficial if you're going down a trail and you have all the all the dust that gets kicked up well this keeps all that dust from getting to your filter which then cleans out the smaller stuff that this didn't catch so it's a great way to keep your your real filter cleaner longer. And it's really easy to clean out. All you do is you just unscrew this. The top comes off. Oh, there we go. Ah, got it. So this is just from driving around town. Let's see what's in there. So you can see like some bug parts and and dirt. And that's just from driving around you know, town to and from work every day. If I didn't have this pre-filter on, all that crap would be stuck to the bottom of my air filter. So, uh, let me just dump that out, there we go. See, voila. Just keeps my, uh, my k and filter that much cleaner. Install took me eight hours. Uh, you have to remove your fender, to remove your fender to take off your fender flare. And in my case, I had to take off my slider because that's attached to the fender right down here, so I had to pull this off, pull this off, you know, the liner off, and then the fender off. So there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just a simple, you know, pipe that runs down the outside of the Jeep and then in through your hood. It's a lot of extra work. And honestly, if I were doing this again, I would not get this snorkel because it was such a, a pain in the butt to install. Another thing I don't like about the snorkel is the drain. When it rains, water gets in the intake. Ironic, I know. You get a snorkel because you don't want to deal with water, and yet you have to deal with water. Rain gets in the snorkel and it fills up the tube that's behind the fender, which is this piece right here. So rain goes in the top, goes down the tube, and it fills up this little reservoir down here in the snorkel. Yes, it's lower, so it won't go to the intake, but you still get water in there. So they gave you this drain, so you open it up and you let the water out. Problem I had is I got mud inside my snorkel. So not only is there water, but there's mud and rocks in this. And as you can see right there, it's full of mud all the way to the cap. And the only way to get this out is I need to take my fender off to get that piece back out and clean it out with a hose, which is gonna be a huge pain in the ass to do because it's already siliconed to the rest of the pieces. And I'll get to that in a minute. The kit comes with a shorter air box. I don't know why, but it's shorter. And because of that, when you mount your stock, or the stock top of the air box to it, it's lower. And so the bracket doesn't attach to the radiator support like it used to. Another thing to consider is the rugged ridge snorkel actually lowers the path the air takes to get into your engine. 
on a stock intake, you have a little inlet right here. The air goes in, down, then up through the air filter, and then through the intake to the throttle body. With a rugged ridge snorkel, the intake is raised, goes down this tube, through another tube inside the fender, then back up to about here. And as you can see behind the shock tower, um, hardly, uh, through a pipe right there, then goes across here, and then up to the underside of the air filter box. So you went from the air going no lower than here to get into your engine to down about here. You know, so there versus up about there. It's quite a big difference in dis or in depth. Another thing, when you're putting this together, the water tightness is reliant on your ability to silicone and waterproof your own connections. You have quite a few of those. You have one underneath the air filter box, then you have an elbow bracket that goes down, then you have a connection there that you have to silicone, then you have this, this aluminum tube that, or L that comes over, you silicone it there, and then it goes down and then up, and then you have this connection which has a, a gasket, and then it goes to your intake. So there are quite a few connections that have to be airtight so you don't suck water in. I mean, yes, the filter is still up here, but there are a lot of places now along the way that, that can fail and you can let water in. So that's something to consider. You know, if I did it again, I wouldn't do the snorkel. I would have gone with an AEV or the ARB where the snorkel comes down and then across the top of the hood and then into the intake this way. I mean, yeah, it blocked my really cool Berserker logo, but the path the air takes is still higher versus going all the way down. I thought that, you know, I might smash it on a rock or whatever, but really that hasn't been the case. You know, I, I've never been close enough to a, to a rock or a tree where I would have smashed it. Even then, you know, that's what the fender's for is to keep this portion of the body out of harm's way. So it would have been protected. So I'd, I, I should have done that to begin with. With the snorkel, another thing to consider is heat. So here's where the snorkel comes out of the fender, goes to the L bracket, goes through this aluminum piece, goes that way towards the front of the Jeep, and then up to the air filter. Problem is, right there, right there, that is the exhaust manifold from the engine. If you look right there, they're touching. So heat is transferring directly from your engine to the air that goes back into the engine. And the instructions, they tell you to beat this back with a hammer or a mallet. I've done that, and they're still touching. And what happens is, like, every time I go wheeling, you know, this, this settles back, and I have to get back here again and, and hit it. And when I'm on the gas, these touch, and they rattle. And every time I get to, like, 2100 or 2400 RPM, it's just, Wah! and it rattles and rattles and rattles and shakes and shakes. And it's so loud and annoying. It's all you can hear in the Jeep is, Wah! and rattling and shaking. It's so freaking annoying. So you get in here with a mallet and a crowbar and try to pry those apart. You know, you have a snorkel, partially because you want the advantage of having cold air from outside of the vehicle, but it gets heated up right here before it goes back into your engine. The hottest I've seen my air temperature get is 150 degrees. That was when it was 110 degrees outside and I was stuck in stop and go rush hour traffic. You know, so you have very little moving air outside of the vehicle, no cold air being forced into the vehicle. Um, so 150 degrees. I don't know what the normal intake air temperature is for a stock vehicle, but that's what I was seeing 150. Now that it's it's getting into winter time, um, I'm at about 90 degrees for my intake air temperature, which is still nice and cool, but that's hot. I mean, imagine how much better it would be if it wasn't right next to the exhaust manifold. Oh, and there's some of those connections I was talking about. So this elbow bracket, you can see some of my silicone right there, but those are two more connections you need to make sure are watertight so you don't suck water into your intake. The more connections, the more points to fail. No bueno. Another issue with the snorkel is you can't run a light bar. Most light bars mount to a bracket that comes down here and then mounts the windshield bracket, but you've got this in the way, so you can't run a bracket up here for your light bar. Also, the filter's in the way. So the only solution if you want to run a light bar up there 
is to buy a rugged ridge light bar. It doesn't look as cool as other light bars, but that's the only option you have if you want a light bar across the top of your Jeep. Mileage. I am getting better mileage with the snorkel. I'm getting about a half to one MPG better than I was without it. So that's nice. Water crossings. How waterproof is it? How is it performed in deep water crossings? Well, I haven't had a chance to test that yet. Um, I'm a little disappointed in that. I bought it because the, an overlanding trip I was going on had 22 river crossings, but they were in a drought before I got there. So the deepest water I went through was maybe up to the axles. So I really haven't needed it. But if I go through some deep water, I'll be sure to post another video with how it performs. Would I buy the Rugged Ridge snorkel again? No. Look at the price difference between the Rugged Ridge and the AEV listed in the Quadratec magazine. Here it's $445 for the snorkel with the pre-filter, whereas up here they have $400 plus $135 for the pre-filter. So you're $535, that's what, a $90 difference between the Rugged Ridge and the AEV. And look at the AEV. It goes down, across, and right into the intake. The Rugged Ridge goes down the fender, then back up the frame, right next to the exhaust manifold, and then up to the bottom of this stubby little air box. It's, it's a, I think this is overcomplicated. I think, yeah, it's cool. You get the little uh, short intake if you want. You can run it like that. But I think most people, they're going to end up running the whole snorkel anyway. And I think this is, this is causing too many issues. And I think you're better off going with something like the AEV. Now here, the ARB, uh, I don't have experience with this one, but looking at the picture, it mounts in the middle of the fender, so you have to do some drilling there. And again, the air is still lower, so I don't know how uh, that gets to the air box, but I imagine it's something similar to this. Uh, correct me in, in the comments below if I'm wrong, but I imagine you'll have the same issues with this. Uh, more connections have to stay waterproof to keep the, the water out of your engine. So at the end of the day, I think I should have done the AEV. So that's what I think. Thanks for watching.